Dear brothers and sisters, although he passed away 20 years ago, there are times I miss my father. Easter promises I will see him again. My father and I visited the great cathedral at Chartres. Malcolm Miller, a world expert on the cathedral, pointed out three sets of sharp stained glass windows. He said they tell a story. The first windows show Adam and Eve leaving the Garden of Eden. The second recount the parable of the Good Samaritan. The third depict the Lord's second coming. Taken together, these stained glass windows can describe our eternal journey. They invite us to welcome all with room in his inn. Like Adam and Eve, we come into a world of thorns and thistles. On our dusty roads to Jericho, we are beset upon, wounded, and left in pain. Though we should help each other, too often we pass to the other side of the road, for whatever reason. However, with compassion, the Good Samaritan stops and binds our wounds with wine and oil. Symbols of the sacrament and other ordinances, the wine and oil point us to the spiritual healing in Jesus Christ. The Good Samaritan puts us on his own donkey, or in some stained glass accounts, carries us on his shoulders. He brings us to the inn, which can represent his church. At the inn, the Good Samaritan says, Take care of him. When I come again, I will repay thee. The Good Samaritan, a symbol of our Savior, promises to return, this time in majesty and glory. In this Easter season, Jesus Christ invites us to become like him, a Good Samaritan, to make his inn, his church, a refuge for all from life's bruises and storms. We prepare for his promised second coming as each day we do unto the least of these as we would unto him. The least of these is each of us. As we come with the Good Samaritan to the inn, we learn five things about Jesus Christ and ourselves. First, we come to the inn as we are, with the foibles and imperfections we each have. Yet, we all have something needed to contribute. Our journey to God is often found together. We belong as united community, whether confronting pandemics, storms, wildfires, droughts, or quietly meeting daily needs. We receive inspiration as we counsel together, listening to each person, including each sister and the Spirit. As our hearts change and we receive his image in our countenance, we see him and ourselves in his church. In him we find clarity, not dissonance. In him we find cause to do good, reason to be good, and increasing capacity to become better. In him we discover abiding faith, liberating selflessness, caring change, and trusting God. In his inn, we find and deepen our personal relationship with God our Father and Jesus Christ. He trusts us to help make the inn the place he needs it to be. As we offer our talents and best efforts, his spiritual gifts also strengthen and bless. One dear sister received spiritual comfort as her husband passed away from COVID-19. She said, I know my dear husband and I will be together again. Second, he entreats us to make his inn a place of grace and space where each can gather with room for all. As disciples of Jesus Christ, we are all equal with no second-class groups. All are welcome to attend sacrament meetings, other Sunday meetings, and social events. We reverently worship our Savior, thoughtful and considerate of each other. We see and acknowledge each person. We smile, sit with those sitting alone, learn names, including of new converts, returning brothers and sisters, young women and young men, each dear primary child. Brothers and sisters, may we each warmly welcome all to his inn. Third, 
and is in. We learn perfection is in Jesus Christ, not in the perfectionism of the world. Unreal and unrealistic, the world's insta-perfect, filtered perfectionism can make us feel inadequate, captive to swipes, likes, or double taps. In contrast, our Savior Jesus Christ knows everything about us we don't want anyone else to know, and he still loves us. His is a gospel of second and third chances made possible by his atoning sacrifice. He invites each of us to be a good Samaritan, less judgmental and more forgiving of ourselves and of each other, even as we strive more fully to keep his commandments. Fourth, at his end, we become part of a gospel community centered in Jesus Christ, anchored in restored truth, living prophets and apostles, and another testament of Jesus Christ, the Book of Mormon. He brings us to his inn and also to his house, the Holy Temple. The house of the Lord is a place where, as with the wounded man on the road to Jericho, the Good Samaritan can cleanse and clothe us prepare us to return to God's presence and unite us eternally in God's family. Finally, fifth, we rejoice that God loves his children and our different backgrounds and circumstances in every nation, kindred, and tongue with room for all in his inn. Over the past 40 years, church members have become increasingly international. Since 1998, more church members lived outside than inside the United States and Canada. By 2025, we anticipate as many church members may live in Latin America as in the United States and Canada. The gathering of Father Lehi's faithful descendants is fulfilling prophecy. During this life, we sometimes wait upon the Lord. We may not yet be where we hope and wish to be in the future. A devout sister says, waiting faithfully upon the Lord for his blessings is a holy position. It must not be met with pity, patronizing, or judgment, but instead with sacred honor. In the meantime, we live now, not waiting for life to begin. Isaiah promises, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Our Good Samaritan promises to return. Miracles occur when we care for each other as he would. When we come with broken hearts and contrite spirits, we can find voice in Jesus Christ and be encircled in his understanding arms of safety. Sacred ordinances offer covenant belonging and the power of godliness to sanctify inner intent and outward action. As we create room in his inn, welcoming all, our good Samaritan can heal us on our dusty mortal roads with perfect love our Father and His Son, Jesus Christ, promise peace in this world and eternal life in the world come. I so gratefully witness and testify in the sacred and holy name of Jesus Christ. Amen.